Hi everyone, Professor Davis again. This time we're going to talk a little bit about how conjugated alkenes absorb UV light and what gives them the spectroscopic properties uh, that are no doubt pointed out in your text. But we're going to start with a reminder and that is that pi bonds form when two adjacent p atomic orbitals overlap to create two new molecular orbitals. Remember an isolated pi bond occurs when two adjacent carbons have available p orbitals which are properly aligned. Bonding then occurs when electrons are shared between these two atomic orbitals. Now we also know that when a compound has alternating double bonds, a series of p orbitals will overlap potentially, creating larger pi molecular orbitals. This is to say that they're not isolated as depicted here, but rather they're conjugated. And these electrons have free run of the entire molecular orbital system. So now let's take a look at how we can quantitatively determine the energies of these different molecular orbitals and how that applies to spectroscopy. Shown here is a molecule of ethene, which contains uh, two sp2 hybridized carbons and therefore a single pi bond. Slightly larger would be 1,3-butadiene, containing two conjugated pi bonds, meaning four atoms. And then the next largest example that we looked at previously was 1,3,5-hexatriene, consisting of three double bonds and therefore six uh, carbons participating. Now if we look at the maximum absorption in the UV range for these compounds, we notice that there's a trend. That as the molecules grow larger and larger, that their lambda max becomes longer and longer in wavelength, meaning they're absorbing electrons of lower energy. So this seems to indicate to us that more conjugated pi systems are expected to have a lower homo-lumo energy gap. And this is in fact the case. Not only is this true, but there's a very simple way to predict exactly what those energy gaps will be. So let's take a look at the reason behind this trend and I'll show you a little mnemonic to help you predict and actually calculate the energy differences that occur. What I'm about to show you is a trick for determining the homo-lumo transition energy in a simple linear conjugated alkene. And this is taken from the literature. This is from a paper written in 1984 by Baker and Baker. You can find this in the Journal of Chemical Education. If you have access to this journal, I highly recommend that you read the paper. It's actually less than a page. The first step of this process is to draw a semicircle with the diameter of 4 beta, where beta is simply a constant that we use for these types of alkenes. We place two false atoms, one at the top and one at the bottom of our semicircle. Next, we place equally spaced atoms along the semicircle, equaling the number of atoms in the pi system that we'd like to characterize. In the third step, we use the height of each atom within the semicircle and trigonometry to calculate the energy of the pi molecular orbitals within this molecule. And if we're interested in how this molecule will absorb UV light, we populate these molecular orbitals with pi electrons from the system. This will allow us to determine the HOMO and LUMO. And finally, we can use that energy of the HOMO-LUMO gap to predict which wavelength of light or how the wavelength absorption will change as we extend conjugation in these linear alkenes. So let's take a look at this idea in practice. I'll give you an example. Okay, let's start with the most simple possible example, and that is ethene, the simplest of all the alkenes. In step one, I draw my semicircle and label the diameter as 4 beta. I then place false atoms at the top and bottom. In the next step, I'm going to place atoms along the semicircle that are evenly spaced. In the case of ethene, I'm going to use two atoms because ethene has two carbons within the pi system. And you can see the consequence of this is that all of the angles will be equal and, of course, 60 degrees in this case because I have two atoms. The height of those atoms placed within the circle shows me the relative energies of the pi 1 and pi 2 molecular orbitals. If I define the center of that circle as being a value alpha, I can then calculate the energies of these two molecular orbitals in terms of alpha and beta. A little bit of trigonometry leads me to the conclusion that these energies are 
alpha minus beta, and alpha plus beta. In the second step, I'm going to determine which is the homo and which is the lumo by adding the two pi electrons to my chart. Now this is relatively simple in the case of ethene since there are only two orbitals, but as we'll see later, it becomes more complex. Now, to get an idea of the energy gap between the homo and lumo, I simply subtract one energy from the other. And in doing so, I can determine that the energy difference is 2 beta. Now that we've done this for ethene, let's compare ethene to a slightly larger conjugated alkene, 1,3-butadiene. I'm going to construct my diagram again, drawing my semicircle and placing false atoms. And in this case, I'm going to use four atoms because I'm using a diene. When I do this, I get four different molecular orbitals, and I can calculate the energy gaps. Since I'm most interested in the homo-lumo energy transition, what I'm going to do now is populate these molecular orbitals with the four pi electrons. This makes it easy for me to identify the homo and the lumo of 1,3-butadiene. And as you can already see from the diagram, the energy gap is smaller. And what this technique allows me to do is to calculate the exact energy gap difference. So in this case, the transition for 1,3-butadiene is about 1.24 over 2 times that of ethene. The practical consequence of this is that it will absorb a longer wavelength light in order to achieve this transition. That's all for now. Next, we're going to talk about frost circles and look at aromaticity and what happens when we look at cyclic compounds instead of linear compounds. And I'll see you then.